Should green hydrogen be banned? It's not a question I am asking lightly, given all the international hype around it, and especially the money being invested. Still, green hydrogen is unfortunately very inefficient. And most importantly, it could be a greenhouse gas. We're investing tens of billions of dollars in the scale up of new technologies like in clean hydrogen. Europe's hydrogen economy is the first being supply built chains today. for green hydrogen are currently being built up in our country. You're probably as surprised as I was. Hydrogen can be produced from renewables, and burning it only produces water, right? Well, this is true until you add another greenhouse gas to the equation, methane. Earth's atmosphere is a mix of multiple gases. Most of these remain at constant concentration because they get produced and consumed naturally at the same time. This natural consumption is what scientists call sinks. And this is actually why our activity is breaking the climate. Because what we produce as carbon exceeds what natural sinks can absorb. Among greenhouse gases humanity emits, the two main ones are carbon dioxide and methane. In nature, the first gets absorbed mainly by forests, plants, plankton, and oceans. Methane has totally different natural sinks than carbon dioxide. When released in the atmosphere, it mainly links to another molecule, the hydroxyl, producing a cascade of other molecules. And the hydroxyl accounts for 90% of the methane's natural sink. And guess what? One of the main competitors to methane in this reaction is hydrogen. When released in the atmosphere, hydrogen reacts with hydroxyl to form water. This phenomenon is known since decades by the scientific community. But as long as hydrogen released in the atmosphere by human activity was limited, this did not pose any concerns. With the current hype on hydrogen all around the world, it became necessary to calculate this effect. In this study published in Nature, scientists calculated how much hydroxyl consumption by hydrogen could impact methane sink. They used different scenarios, some based on blue hydrogen, produced using methane steam reforming, combined with carbon capture, while other scenarios were based on green hydrogen, produced using renewable energy. And among all scenarios compared, only two do not increase greenhouse effect. In these scenarios, there are thresholds that should not exceed a maximum of 1% for blue hydrogen and 2% for the green one. These thresholds are for leakage. Yes, leaks are the culprits here. And this is because hydrogen has a unique specificity, which also makes it absolutely not interesting for many applications. For hydrogen, we can confidently say, size matters. On paper, Hydrogen is promising as it is the most abundant element in the universe. But on Earth, its scarcity, as it's almost always linked to something else, as well as its size, are big problems. That's why it needs energy to be produced and stored. A lot of energy. Blue hydrogen produced from steam methane reforming is supposed to use carbon capture, which is still not operational and costs a lot. And in any case, the hydrogen it produces has actually less energy than the natural gas used. So let's focus on the green one. To produce green hydrogen, the most efficient way is using PEMs, or proton exchange membranes. Don't get bluffed by the term. A PEM is similar to a fuel cell. It is just reversed. Instead of creating electricity from hydrogen and oxygen, it creates hydrogen and oxygen from electricity. To produce 80 watts equivalent of hydrogen, PEMs consume 100 watts. That's 80% efficiency in the very best case scenario. And even when finally produced, given it's the smallest molecule in the universe, it still needs to be compressed or liquefied to be transported and stored. In the worst case scenario, when liquefied, 40% is lost. In the best case scenario, when compressed, there are two options. Either we lose 7.2% efficiency if the hydrogen is to be consumed on site, or we lose 13% if it needs to be transported, which represents the majority of applications. So at the end, once produced and stored, and even before being used, hydrogen has already lost 33% in the best case scenario. 
Not to mention that fuel cells to produce electricity only reach a whopping 60% for the moment and still use extremely rare metals like platinum. And the worst at this stage is that hydrogen can still be leaking. Because it's very small, detecting hydrogen losses at the leaky points is currently close to impossible, at least at commercial scale. And since it is odorless and colorless, it can only be seen once it leaked already via pressure differential. And this is a problem. The Center for Global Energy Policy estimates the current leakage between 2.9 and 5.6%. This is still too high a threshold compared to the 2% the study gives. Now, to be fair, the authors of the study themselves say they use the minimalist model, which could mean the analysis still needs to go deeper. But considering even NASA targets the double 4% for its SLS to avoid explosion risks, we can realistically assume that without performance ceilings and cost-effective detection methods, any industrial utilization will target the same threshold. So, the dream of widespread usage of hydrogen to store energy is definitely not realistic, unless we want to continue increasing greenhouse effect gases concentration in the atmosphere. And applications like transportation where leakage is less controllable whether in stations or on wheels, could actually be very bad ideas for the environment. And by the way, why transforming electricity to hydrogen losing more than 50% to then just use it as electricity? Use batteries, they are much more efficient. But does that totally disqualify hydrogen? If leakage is the problem, then there is hope that science finds solutions with better ceilings and better detection methods. In 1990, during what was called the Summer of Hydrogen, NASA struggled to fill it into its shuttles between May and October. In addition to preventing launches and costing more than $3.8 million, these leaks drove NASA engineers crazy. This is one of the reasons why NASA invented the sensor that can detect hydrogen and can function in all conditions. So, solutions do exist, they just need to be adapted for commercial applications. Another solution could come from storage. Many scientists are researching solid hydrogen storage where it links to other atoms until it is heated to be extracted and used. This adds additional energy needs, but it could at least be an opportunity for other applications where batteries cannot be used like freight, industry heat and aviation. What about you? Do you think hydrogen should be banned, or can it still be used to solve the climate change? Let me know in the comments. In any case, the question whether hydrogen is a solution or not should be answered very quickly given its indirect greenhouse effect, the international hype around it, but also the climate tipping points we could be reaching very soon. In a previous episode of this series, I talked about Arctic ice expected to vanish by 2030 and its impact on climate tipping elements. This investigation took me somewhere around 100 hours to complete and to produce. So if you reach this stage, I'd like to thank you very much for your time. If you want to support the channel, you can do it by liking and subscribing. My name is Khalid. I talk about interesting science. And again, thank you very much.